What is up guys, it's RTK here. Today I'm going to show you guys the strategy I'm going to use to farm up a headhunter. According to my calculations, it should take me around 11 hours, so I'll be doing that over the weekend. It requires no magic find at all. I will be doing it on my explosive arrow elementalist. It is very, very easy to set up and we are able to self-sustain our maps. It is so simple, we don't even need to chisel and alk our maps. You just need a build that can deal decent boss damage. So let's talk about the Atlas tree that I will be using. Here is the Atlas tree, as you can see. It is by no means the best, but it is basically all it takes. The key mechanics that I will be focusing on are harvest with crop rotation over here. And also Maven with uh, the destructive play. The main reasoning behind my choices is that there are a lot of people doing magic find currently. Uh, all the bow players, tornado shot players, but there's no supply for things like harvest or boss invitation because when they're magic finding, they don't use those kind of mechanics, especially the maven invitation. With the prices of progenesis reaching over 100 divines due to the demand of all the, from all the magic finding characters, I expect the price of maven invitations to keep going up as well since the progenesis is an uber maven drop. In addition, I will also abuse the price in bulk since things like life forces and maven invitations can fetch an even better price when you have a lot of them. The whole reason why I'm choosing harvest with crop rotation is because we can abuse the cheap price of Bruce sextants and by pathing to crop rotation using the chance of having less blue plants and using blue sextants we can save some money in, for, in our investments and get even more profit. And regarding destructive play, the basic strategy is that we can spawn one to three additional bosses and each of those bosses will also be able to drop map such as synthesis map, uh, elder shaper guardian maps, and conquer maps. And after that, uh, the basically the tree is going to be pathing for all the nodes that gives the chance for map drops to be duplicated. And in total, we have 18.5% chance for map drops to be duplicated. And this way, we can uh, duplicate the boss maps for profit. Uh, and we are using scarabs to uh, rusted scarabs for extra pack size with growing hordes. And that's pretty much it. The maps I'm going to, to be running are Shaper Guardian maps because they're just very simple, uh, straightforward layout. So I have here the sextant uh, that I will be using. So the sextants I'm going to be using are Shaper Guardian maps, uh, Harvest Blue Plants because they are the cheapest, Magic Pack Size for some extra pack size, which is always good to have, and the last one, Sacred Grove to force the harvest in the maps. I have all the materials over here in those two tabs, and I have also bought some scarabs. So overall in those two tabs, I have four sets of sextants with some maps. The maps are not very important because with the compass that drops Shaper Garni maps on completion, we are basically sustaining our maps. So we can start off with four maps and just continue running them. And other than that, uh, we are also able to sustain the form invitation. It is around a 25% chance to drop. So you might get unlucky and not drop one invitation uh, from the four guardians. That's why I started with three and I'm going to buy if I need uh, extra formed invitations and at the end, we'll see if I'm able to sustain the form invitations. And for the invitations, I'm looking for 70% and more quantity. This will grant us five to seven splinters, depending on the quantity you roll. Um, for example, you can roll up to 120% quantity by corrupting it. And sometimes it can drop up to seven splinters. And the splinters, after 10 splinters, is going to be combining to the Maven's Writ, which is currently selling at 2.3 and still going up. As for the cost of the sextants, I use PoE stack to buy all the sextants. Uh, currently, the blue plants are uh, 35 C each. Um, the reason why I'm using blue plants is because they are so cheap compared to purple plants, uh, and uh, which are 70 to 100 C each. And yellow plants, I think it's even more. Uh, even pl yellow plants are also 80 to 100 C each and the, the blue plants are only 35s each and we're using crop rotation uh, to farm yellow and purple juice 
using the blue sextants. If you guys need additional information regarding crop rotation, I have made some video farming it uh, lastly, and you can check out my old video on crop rotation. Other than the plants, we go Sacred Grove. Currently, it is around 35C each for Sacred Grove. And for Shaper's Guardian Sextant, it is 20 to 25C. 20 to 25C. And lastly, we have Magic Pack Size. I believe it is 6 to 7 Chaos each. So overall, if I go to the stash view, I refresh my tabs, and I just go Headhunter 1 and 2. Just want to load up the value of those two tabs quickly. So I have updated the tab. As you can see, the tab, the two tabs over here is worth a total of 24 divines with the six divine worth of rusted scarabs. Let's say I have an investment of 30 divines and I'm hoping to get 160 divines worth of loot uh, after farming all of the, those maps and afford a headhunter. And that's it. Let's get farming. Alright, that is 160 maps done. And on the last invitation, I got Awakened Unbound Elements. The best one, the best gem I got from all the invitations. Uh, I will show you guys the results and hopefully I have enough for a headhunter. I got just a little bit more than a quad tab worth of loot. And uh, I'm gonna clean up, sort everything out and uh, show you guys what are the most important drops. 
because I got a lot of maps and I, I am not planning to really trade all of them and hopefully I have enough just from the big drops alone. While I'm cleaning up and speeding up the footage, let's talk a little bit about what I learned from the farm. The main drops that I have is going to be life forces and maven invitations. It is also one of the reason that I chose this method is because it is going to be fairly easily to sell everything. Um, a lot of people are buying them in bulk and we can sell them very easily. Compared to something like essences, it is much easier to liquidate everything I think a lot of people are doing farming methods, but they don't really talk about the trading time. And uh, just this on this fact alone, I really, really like this method. Regarding the mechanics, uh, crop rotation is really, really fun. I think it keeps me engaged while I'm farming it because I have to think a little bit about which uh, crop to choose and which one to farm. And it keeps me engaged. Similarly, the Maven, witnessing Maven and her summoning all the bosses uh, keeps me on my toes and uh, the bosses are pretty tough I would say if you don't have a bossing build um, sometimes it could be incredibly hard and I'm down to maybe last two portals this is due to the small arena that our bosses are in especially in the Minotaur and if the maps has increased AoE it is very difficult to dodge the when the Minotaur burrows into the ground so expect to die a lot if you don't have a very very strong build in addition the random bosses that maven can spawn are going to be sometimes insane as well uh the one that i have really a lot of trouble with is the green goddess one that does a laser if the arena doesn't have any object where you can hide it basically instantly kills me the form invitation bosses are actually very very easy compared to what the bosses are in the maps. So if you're able to handle the bosses in the maps, you will be able to handle them in the v in the invitation. This is because the sexton we use that gives cheaper guardian maps also increases their life by three times, I believe, 200% more life and 100% more damage to the boss. In the invitation, we don't have the modifier from the sextant. So it makes the fight actually very easy. And with regards to the loot, we are getting some Awakened Gems as well. I forgot to mention that. So Awakened Gems can drop when we are using Maven's Witness. And Awakened Gems can drop in the maps itself or in the invitation. Most of the Awakened Gems I got is from the invitation. I believe uh, two are from the maps itself. And other the, all the other Awakened Gems are from the invitation. The most valuable gem that I got was on my last invitation. It was the Awakened Unbound Elements, but you can definitely get some better ones. If you get lucky, you can get Awakened GMP, maybe Awakened Fork and Multi-Strike. Multi Those are 50 to 80 divines each. Okay, so I've done sorting out everything. As you can see, here are the Maven invitations. We got 23 of them and two splinters. A total of two raw divine drops, some Awakened gems, uh, we have two Awakened Minion Damage, Awakened Lightning Penetration, those are pretty bad. The best ones are Awakened Deadly Ailments, 140 Chaos, Awakened Void Manipulation, 1.2 Divine, and Awakened Unbound Ailments, which is 2.2 Divine. And other than that, we have 137,000 Yellow Juice, 94,000 Blue Juice, and 94,000 Purple Juice. We got one Void Born Key, and one Valdo's puzzle box. This is all the Shaper maps we got. As you can see, we are over-sustaining our maps. And uh, also we got four Cortex drops. Those I believe are one Divine each. Yep, one Divine, 1.2 Divine each. And uh, other than that, all the fragments uh, from the Shaper Guardians. And we got some good bases. We have this, Shaper Silk, Gloves, 150C. Uh, we have Gold Amulet, Shaper Gold Amulet, around 100C. Uh, and we got two of them. Other than that, we have two formed invitation left. So I had to buy around five in the middle of the run because I was running low. But overall, having 10 invitation in the beginning, and you should be able to go through 160 maps without going out to buy extra ones. Other than that, in this tab, we still have a lot of random maps. 
we, I didn't bother sorting the Elder Guardian maps nor the um, Conqueror maps. And I think, oh, we have also one uh, Venters. Let's see what we got. Very bad Venters. Okay, I will be using POE stack and we should be able to see all the values in those three tabs. So let's get started. Here are the three tabs, Project, Headhunter Farm 1, Headhunter Farm 2. As you can see, I have tested this farm already. Uh, the three peaks, as you, as you can see on the 28th, is when I did eight sets of the maps and I saw that I got around 30 to 37 divine worth of loot and I decided to start this project. So this is what we started with. Started with. I, I didn't refresh the tabs at all. And uh, if I click load, we should be able to see the changes. Suspense, suspense. Let's see if we have enough for a headhunter. Okay, that's the loading complete. And we have 195 divines. We have enough for a headhunter. This is actually more than I thought I would get. And I'm very happy that it worked out. Let's just go through what are the most valuable and see if we missed anything. As you can see, the Maven's Writh alone is 64.2 divines. And I believe you can probably get more than that in bulk. Uh, the yellow life forces are 32 and the blue and purple around 21 and 17 div. So just by selling those four things alone, four trades in total, we should get around 140 divs. So in total, we did 160 maps and we got 195 divine worth of loot. And uh, if I exclude some of the things I don't sell, I'll just put like something in the in here, the min minimum total value, let's just say 20C. So if I remove all the random stuff, we have around 177 divine. We did 160 maps to one to get 177 divines. So we're getting over one divine per map. And let's say I do the map for uh, four minutes per map. Once 160 maps times four, 640 minutes, that is around 11 hours of farming if I'm doing four minutes per map. And if I do the 177 divine divided by the 11 hours, we should get, oh, we get 16 div an hour. Obviously, this is not including the cost. So if I factor in a cost, let's say um, 30, 35 divine worth of investment in the beginning, we get 12.9 divine, so almost 13 divines per hour profit. This is very, very impressive from a easy to set up farming method. I will be putting everything into a spreadsheet that you can look into it yourself and you will have a link in the description. Overall, the conclusion that I've come to is that you don't have to do magic find at all and uh, you can do a profit finders are using to make a good profit per hour without doing magic find. Overall, the conclusion is that you don't need to do magic find to make a decent profit per hour. You just need to understand the market, the demand and the supply and what items are people looking for and be the supplier in order to get a great farming strategy. As always, the price of everything in Path of Exile will vary and change but the data will be there in the spreadsheet for you to take a look. And you probably heard the saying during a gold rush, sell shovels. Well, for POE, we all know who the winners are. Yes, they are the sextant rollers. That's it for me. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned a bit about the economy in POE. Leave a like, subscribe, comment down below what strategy you are currently using and see you guys in 2024.